another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can create a what's new screen, uh, basically what you see here in your app. So this is very similar, if not identical, to how Apple creates their what's new screens. Uh, if you've ever uh, updated your iOS version or if you recall when you first got an iPhone, they show the screen in the music app or the calendar app or uh, basically any of their first party apps to convey what's new in the app. So we'll take a look at how to create it. Uh, we're also going to look at how to ensure that the screen doesn't pop up again every single time we open up the app. So you see here it does pop up again. So we'll take a look at how to control that by version basis. And finally, we'll look at customization. So how to make sure our uh, app supports dark mode in this screen, these colors we can adjust, uh, the title and all that good stuff. So that said, make sure you absolutely smash that like button down below. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm, helps me create more videos for you all. If you haven't subscribed already, welcome to the channel. Subscribe, get Xcode ready, get excited. Let me stop talking and let's get into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. So let's get started by creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application template. And let's call this my what's new example. Make sure the language here is set to Swift and hit enter. We're going to save it on our desktop and let's jump right in. So let me first start by expanding Xcode here. And what we want to do before we start writing any of our own code is bring in the framework that allows us to create this what's new screen pretty easily. So we're going to do that with CocoaPods. So open up terminal, CD into your project, do a pod init, and then we can do an open pod file. If you're not familiar with CocoaPods, I've got a separate video going through what it is, how to install it. So take a look there. Once we've opened up a text edit for this pod file, the pod or the framework we want to bring in is aptly named what's new kit. Let's lowercase the P because if it's uppercase and we try to install it, it actually gives an error. Let's close text edit, run pod install, and let me expand this. And so it just installed, and what you care about is this line right here uh, that it installed. Now we can close this Xcode window with a command W, and we can open up the workspace with an open project name dot XC workspace. And now our project is set up to write our own code. So let me expand this window again, and let me open up the project folder here, go to our view controller file, and let's select our simulator up here and just hit command R to build and run. Make sure our empty app is showing up and running here. So uh, to show this what's new screen, we actually don't need to touch a storyboard or design an interface ourselves. We simply need to provide titles, subtitles, images, and present this what's new screen. So what we're going to start by doing is we are going to import the framework we just installed via CocoaPods and it's called What's New Kit. And let's get rid of this comment. And what I like to do and what I recommend you guys do is the What's New screen generally pops up when your app opens up, let's say in a new version update, and you want to show that screen. So I like to do that uh, showing of the What's New screen in View Did Appear. We'll call super view did appear, pass an animated, 
And the reason I do it here is uh, view did load is kind of meant to actually uh, set up things right after your view loads. View did appear once the view has appeared on the screen, we, we should be good to go to show the what's new screen. So let's actually show the what's new screen. So to do that, we need to first create the items that we're going to show in the what's new screen. So as you saw in the beginning of the video, it's a list of images, titles, and subtitles. So we're going to say let items equals what's new. And this takes a title and items. So the title is what's at the top of the screen. So we're just going to say what's new. And items is an array of what's new items. And we're going to create that by doing what's new dot item. And you'll notice that each of these items has a title, subtitle, and an image. So uh, let's basically create all these. And I'm going to create one and then copy and paste it, to save some time. But let's say the title can be for the first one, add favorites. Uh, now you can add favorites in the app. And I'm just going to make these up. So obviously in your app, you guys would show whatever you want to show. For the image, we can use a custom image or one of these system images if you're supporting iOS 13. So we're going to stick with the star image. And now I'm going to copy and paste this, let's say four times. And pro tip, you can highlight this, hit control I, and it fixes the indentation for you. Uh, this is a huge pet peeve for me and it drives me nuts. So uh, I always use control I to fix my indents. So we can ignore this warning. It's basically just saying that we created this what's new variable, but haven't used it yet. Let's update the values in here. The next one will be volume for the image. Um, I think ear is another image Apple provides. And the last one we'll do gear. So we'll say settings. Um, for this one, we'll say listen volume. You can control the volume now for listen, listen to the top songs from around the world. And uh, as you have probably guessed by now, I'm just naming these as if this is like some kind of music app. Um, so for settings, control the quality of your music. So cool. Now that we have this what's new object created with a title and four what's new items, we can create a what's new controller. So we'll say VC is what's new controller. And when you open up the parentheses for the constructor, you'll see there's a couple ways to create a what's new controller. So we're going to talk about a few of these. But to start off, let's pick this first one, rather the second one that passes in what's new. And we'll pass in what's new which is our variable up here. Actually, we called it item. Let's call this what's new, like so. And let me copy paste this. OK, it's correct. And now we can simply say present VC animated true. Hit command R. And once your app launches, you'll notice you get this really nice looking pop up. For what's new, it's already laid out and formatted. We got our title, we got our subtitle, and we got our button. So we can swipe to dismiss this. Uh, or if we open the app again, we can hit the button. Um, but something you'll notice is this what's new should technically only show up once, right? So if we have our user update our app and we've added features, we want to make them aware of those features. Uh, they really don't want to see this every time, and they'll get pretty annoyed pretty fast and delete your app. So we need to keep track of the fact that we've shown this what's new screen. And to do that, there's a variety of ways, but it's a little bit of overhead that we, the app developer, maybe are lazy and don't want to do. So the nice thing about what's new kit is that it has the functionality to control if the screen has been shown for a app version built in. And the way that we do that 
uh, is by using a, another constructor of this that has a, uh, another property, a parameter called version uh, store. And this takes a key value, what's new version store. And once uh, we put this in here, this actually returns an optional instance of the controller. So I'm gonna take this whole line, put a guard, paste the line back, else return. And this error down here will go, will go away because now we're unwrapping it. And the reason that this instance of the initializer returns an optional controller is if the controller has been shown to the user already, it's not gonna show it again. Uh, basically exactly what we want. So if we hit Command R, and we see this time the screen showed, hit this to dismiss, close the app, reopen, and now we have no what's new screen. Uh, however, there's actually a small bug related to this version store thing. So if we delete the app and reinstall it, you'll notice that we can swipe the screen away with a swipe animation or a swipe gesture. And when we present it again, um, sometimes actually it comes back. It looks like it didn't come back that time. Uh, but what I was trying to go for, what I'm trying to mention is uh, what you could optionally do if you ever notice that bug in your app is you can set VC is modal in presentation to true. And if you set that, uh, your user won't actually be able to swipe away. Whoops, let's, uh, let's reinstall this app. Let's delete this. Your user won't be able to swipe away your screen. They're gonna have to use the button and acknowledge that they pretend read your what's new. So that said, let's take a look at some customization of the screen, background color, dark mode, all that jazz. So I'm gonna hit Command Z a few times so we can get this back. And this is the minimal constructor that's available. And there is another instance of it, another type, which takes a theme and it's an enum and there's a bunch of themes in here. Uh, there's dark with colors, there's light with colors, there's just, there's just colors, uh, there is a bunch. So the dark refers to, as you can imagine, the background color, and the blue, or the color in this in this case, whatever it may be, refers to the button color and the tint of the icons or the images. So if we hit Command R, you'll notice the background is dark, our text is light, white in this case, and our button and images are blue. So let's take a look at another one. So here's another instance of dark. Uh, Apple loves to use this one for dark mode, and they also like to use uh, the standard red, which you'll see in the calendar app or the music app. Uh, this is almost verbatim exactly how Apple does it uh, in terms of the UI. So that's basically how you can show a pretty nice looking what's new screen. Um, something to keep in mind, which I, I personally do in my own apps as well, is you wanna make sure that the icons look consistent. Uh, I've seen some people use this method of showing a what's new screen and they put in really different looking icons and it just makes the whole thing look pretty ugly to be frank. So here we're using the system icons, which I would strongly recommend if you're supporting just iOS 13 and up where these system icons are available. But if you're using custom images, make sure that they look similar uh, be brief in your subtitles. No one really wants to read huge paragraphs by any means. People will often just swipe this whole thing away to begin with. Uh, this is tried and tested in iPad uh, environments, so definitely take a look there too. That said, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out quite a bit. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you aren't already. Comment down below if you have a suggestion, question, if something isn't working for you, I try to respond to every comment. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.